This is the first in a series of videos that I'm making to support a number theory course that I'm teaching this semester. And here we're just going to lay down the, the basic framework to move on to more standard number theory results like divisibility, modular arithmetic, quadratic residues, primitive roots, and all of the stuff like that, which we will cover in this course. So I want to start off with our most basic object of study in this course, and that would be the natural numbers. So we will not completely construct these natural numbers in a set theoretic way, but we will prove some things involving the piano axioms a little bit later. So let's just recall that by the natural numbers, we mean the positive integers. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. We will not consider 0 a natural number in this course. So there are two standard operations on the natural numbers, addition and multiplication. So addition is commutative, it's associative, multiplication is commutative and associative, and furthermore we've got this nice distributive rule of multiplication over addition. Also, the natural numbers are something called a well-ordered set, and that means that if you've got two non-equal elements, you can always decide which one is larger. So I've written that here. So if you've got m and n, which are natural numbers, and they are non-equal, then we know m is less than n or m is greater than n. You might take this for granted, but there are sets which are not well-ordered. They are partially ordered or even worse, not ordered at all. For example, the set of subsets of a set is partially ordered. Sometimes you can compare them via inclusion, but sometimes you can't. Okay, another couple of things that we'll take as fact are the Archimedean principle. So that says if we have a non-empty set of natural numbers, it must have a least element. Also, as needed, we'll use the principle of mathematical induction. We'll have a whole video devoted to kind of practicing mathematical induction a couple of videos from now, but let's just recall kind of its basic set setup. If we've got a set S of natural numbers satisfying two conditions, so one is an element of S, and if K is an element from S, that implies that K plus one is an element from S then S is in fact the whole natural numbers. So you can think about 1 being an S as being our base case, then K being an S is like our induction hypothesis, which implies the induction step, K plus 1 is an S, and then S being all natural numbers would be something like a formula holding for all natural numbers. So we're also going to study the following sets which are extensions of natural numbers. So the integers, so that's all positive and negative natural numbers, and then zero. So I wrote it like this, zero plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three, so on and so forth. We'll also look at rational numbers. So that'll be all ratios of integers where the denominator is not zero. So we've got like a half, a third, minus 99 over 54,000. You know, there are lots of examples of rational numbers. Okay, so now that we've got these well-known objects and facts out of the way, let's jump into our main goal of this first video, was to, which is to look at the Peano axioms and show that addition and multiplication in the natural numbers satisfies these axioms. So now that we've looked at the natural numbers, we want to look at a more formal approach to the natural numbers called the Peano axioms. So the Peano axioms for the natural numbers are as follows. So let's see, we've got five of them over there. So it says that one is a natural number. If n is a natural number, then n plus one is a natural number. So in other words, everything in the natural numbers has something called a successor in the natural numbers, which we're calling n plus one. Then if m and n are natural numbers such that m plus 1 is equal to n plus 1, in other words, the successor of m is equal to the successor of n, then m is equal to n. So in other words, our successor function is an injective or a one-to-one -one function. Next, there is not a natural number n such that n plus 1 is equal to n. And then finally, we've got this inductive action on the natural numbers. And so that really reads just like the induction that we had before. So if S is a subset of N containing 1 
And if n is an s, that implies n plus 1 is, a, is an s, then that means s is equal to natural numbers. Okay, and so we can actually define addition and multiplication via these axioms. So we want to start with a successor function. So that's going to be a function s from n to n. And we'll just notate it like this, s of n equals n plus 1. So I want to reiterate that we don't know how to add natural numbers yet. We don't know how to multiply natural numbers yet. But what we do know how to do is get to the next natural number. And we do that via the successor function. So we can't do something like 5 plus 4. That's impossible so far. But we can find the number that's after 5. That's obviously 6. But if we can find the next number, we can actually define addition and multiplication recursively. That's exactly what we'll do right here. So we can define addition as follows. So like I said, the successor of n is n plus 1. And then we can recursively define m plus the successor of n as the successor of m plus n. So let's see how that works and how that really gives us a recursive definition of addition on the natural numbers. Let's say we wanted to do 5 plus 4. So obviously that's equal to 9. But we don't know how to add 5 and 4. But recursively, we do know how to add 5 and 3. And so we can think about 4 as the successor of 3. But now we can apply this formula that we're baking into the definition of addition to say that this is going to be the successor of 5 plus 3, but that's the successor of 8, because now we know how to add 5 and 3, because that's happening like lower down in the induction than 5 plus 4. So we've assumed that we've recursively defined everything up to this 5 plus 4, not including the 5 plus 4, so we know how to do 5 plus 3. I know this is like kind of abstract and sticky, but this is actually a really important take on the natural number arithmetic. Okay, but what's the successor of 8? That's obviously equal to 9. So 5 plus 4 is 9, so we're good to go there. Now let's look at multiplication. So a priori, we don't know how to multiply two natural numbers, like for example, 3 and 6. But we can define multiplication via the successor function recursively again. So we'll define it so that 1 is the multiplicative identity. So that makes sense. We've got n times 1 is equal to n. And then m times the successor of n is equal to m times n plus m. And I want to point out that if we write the successor of n as n plus 1, let's notice that this looks a lot like just the distributive rule. So just to reiterate, we'll take into account that we know how to take the product of m times n in order to find m times the successor of n. So that's how we're baking this recursion in there. Okay, so let's look at 3 times 6. So let's notice that, that is 3 times the successor of 5. But by our recursion step, we're assuming that we know how to multiply 3 and 5. So that's good. So we can write this as 3 times 5 plus 3. But again, like I said, we know how to multiply 3 times 5. So we can use the fact that that's 15 plus 3 is equal to 18. So in the end, we end up with 3 times 6 is equal to 18, which is what we need. So these two definitions of addition and multiplication only require us to know how to find the next natural number and then apply these definitions recursively. So like I said, this is a nice abstract take on the arithmetic of the natural numbers. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and then we'll move on to the next stuff. So we just got done using the successor function to recursively define addition and multiplication. But we didn't prove that addition and multiplication satisfied any of those rules that we had on the first board. You know, like associativity or commutativity or so on and so forth. And now we're going to prove some of those and some of those will be left for exercises as well. So we'll start by proving that that recursive definition via the successor function defines addition as an associative operation. 
Okay, so let's jump into the proof, which will be by induction. So let's fix two natural numbers, L and M. So I've got L and M are natural numbers, and we want to set A equal to the following set. So this is going to be the set of all natural numbers in where we have associativity working with L and M. So in other words, L plus M plus N is equal to L plus M plus N, like that. Well, notice I've changed the parentheses from one side of that equality to the other side. So our goal is to prove by induction that A is equal to N. So that would tell us that we always have associativity for these fixed L and M's, but since these are fixed arbitrarily, that means that we always have associativity. So that means we need to do this just via normal induction, so we need our base case. So our base case will be to determine if one is an element from A. So let's look at that. We've got L plus M plus one, and we wanna slide those parentheses over. But let's notice that that is equal to the successor of L plus M by the definition of the successor, but then that's equal to L plus the successor of M by our recursive definition for addition, but then that's equal to L plus M plus one, where we expand that successor of M out into M plus one. But now this being equal to this is exactly what we need to say that one is an element from our set A, because one satisfies this equation. Okay, so let's maybe start with the induction hypothesis here. Okay, so let's recall that we had the following definition of our set A, where L and M were fixed natural numbers. We already showed that one was an element from A, setting up our induction, and our goal is to show that everything is an element from A. In other words, A is equal to the natural numbers. So let's do that by making an induction hypothesis and then proving that, that that induction hypothesis proves an induction step which fills everything in. Okay, so let's suppose that N is an element from A and consider some sort of object which would help us show that N plus one or the successor of N is an element from A. So let's do that. Let's take L plus M plus N plus one. So what we want to be able to do is move these parentheses over. Recall that that would tell us that n plus 1 was an element from A. Well, let's rewrite this as L plus M plus the successor of N using the definition of the successor. But then by our recursive definition for addition, that's equal to the successor of L plus M plus N. But then by our induction hypothesis, we can slide those parentheses just the way we want. So this is the successor of L plus M plus N, okay? But then by our recursive definition for addition, again, this is gonna be L plus the successor of M plus N. And then finally, working one more time out, again, with our recursive definition for addition, that's equal to L plus M plus the successor of N. But we can finish that off by saying that this is equal to L plus M plus N plus one. But starting here and ending here is exactly what is needed to show that N plus one is an element from A. So let's see what we had. One was an element from A, and then if N was an element from A, N plus one is an element from A. But by this last Peano axiom, that means that N as in the set of natural numbers is equal to A. So that means this associativity always holds. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at a couple more properties. We just got done showing that our recursive definition of addition and multiplication via the successor function obeyed the associative rule for addition.
Now we're going to show that that same definition implies the distributive rule of multiplication over addition. We're going to do this via a similar strategy. So we'll start by fixing natural numbers L and M, and then considering the following set. So we'll call it B just to make it a little different than the last one. And this is gonna be all N, which are natural numbers, which make that associativity rule work, or I should say that make that distributive rule work. So in other words, L times M plus N is equal to LM plus LN. So obviously our goal is to use induction to show that B is equal to N. So let's maybe put that over here. So our goal is to show that B is equal to N, and then I'll just say verbally by induction. So that means we need to look at our base case first. In other words, we need to show that one is an element from B, then make an induction hypothesis and show that the induction step holds from the induction hypothesis. Okay, so let's get to it. So notice we've got L times M plus one. So if we can appropriately distribute L, then that means that one will be in B. So let's see, this is the same thing as L times the successor of M using the successor function, but then using the recursive definition of multiplication via the successor function, this is equal to L times M plus um, L. Okay, great. But then looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this, we see that that like immediately implies that one is an element from B. So we're done with our base case. And now we're ready to jump into our induction hypothesis. So let's suppose that we've got some new element N, which is an N, and we want to show that n plus 1 is an n. So we can do that by considering the following calculation, which makes use of that recursive definition of multiplication via the successor function. So we've got L times m plus n plus 1. So this is the object that we want to be able to distribute L over but we probably wanna write this thing with the successor function. This is L times M plus successor of N. Okay, but now we can use our recursive definition for addition to push those together. This is gonna be equal to L times the successor of M plus N. Okay, but now we can use our definition of multiplication that was built before to rewrite this, and that is going to be rewritten as L times M plus N plus L. Then next, we can apply the distributive rule to this because we assumed N was in B, so that's gonna leave us with LM plus LN plus L then take this bit apart using our recursive definition for the multiplication via the successor function. That's gonna give us LM plus, let's see, it's gonna look like L successor of N, but then we can recall that the successor of N is N plus one, so we've got LM plus LN plus one. And then starting over here and ending over here, is exactly what we need to show that n plus 1 is in b, but that means that b is equal to all natural numbers n. So we proved our base case, and then we proved that the nth case implies the n plus first case, which means by induction we've got our set is all natural numbers, which means this kind of thing holds for all natural numbers, which means our distributive rule is always true. Okay, so let's get rid of this and we'll keep going. Okay, so the rest of the properties of the natural numbers or the arithmetic of the natural numbers follow very, very similarly. So I'm gonna leave those as homework. And if you're in my course, that means you need to turn them in at the beginning of the class into the notebook that we're keeping for these warm-up type problems. So I've got three for you. The first is to show that the commutativity of addition holds. 
The second is that the commutativity of multiplication holds. And finally, the third is the associativity of multiplication holds. Okay, that's a good place to stop.